Hey, oh, hello, everybody. See the chatter going on. Some of you have been here for like three hours. It's pretty incredible. Well, welcome to the stream. Here we go. I saw some of the stuff coming through already. The usual stuff. We're going to buckle up here. Uh, I'm excited to show you guys what you're going to have coming down the pipe for you all as artists. So we're going to be highlighting the next version of ZBrush, which, of course, as you all already know, it's going to be 2021.6. Hello, everybody. I see all the highs coming in. Sounds like everybody can hear me fine and see me fine. All right. So that's obviously a checkmark plus for us all right here. So again, <clears throat> this is going to be great. Uh, I'm excited to show you what we've been up to. Where are we going? And again, just I'll get it out of the way right now. You guys will be able to get the version I'm going to be showing you next week. So you're going to stay and I'll continue to let you know when it's going to be available. And again, this is a free upgrade. So all of you that are registered users, you're going to be able to upgrade this through your actual upgrader application that's in your current ZBrush. So you use your Z upgrader application and you'll be upgraded in this version. And of course, when you log into your account at your My Licenses, you'll be able to download the full installer of this particular version when we release it. So take advantage of those that don't own ZBrush right now in the stream. Definitely any of you that purchased maybe ZBrush this week, you will get this version when it comes out and upgrade as well for free. And of course, any of those of your subscribers that have been using subscription services with the month, the month or the six month, of course, you will then get the newer version as well, which is 2021.6 for ZBrush. Okay, so there you go. So let's get into this. Let's take a look at what we've been doing, right? So I'm gonna I'm gonna start with a couple of things in here for you all. Um, for those that maybe didn't get a chance to watch the ZBrush Summit, this is an amazing model from one of James Kane. If you're in here, James, I'm not sure if you're in here, but it's a beautiful model. He made this model for the summit to make a monument in essence, going through that of making a monument. How would you do that? Because ZBrush is obviously used to do this a lot, right? <clears throat> so what I want to do is actually something new. So in the previous version, okay, we gave you guys in your rendering, right? We gave you guys now a preview AO, right? So you now have this preview ability. Okay, so obviously the benefit to this is when you're working and sculpting. So let me go to one of my favorite brushes, right? This is actually updating the AO. So I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna switch to a flatter material so you guys can see this, right? So you can see how this is just updating as we go. So we wanted to keep going with this and push this element a little bit more of using a AO. So what we've done, I'm going to switch to a model here that we have a version of oh, beautiful. Yeah, might as well stick it, make it look like a monument, right? So what we've added to this upcoming version is a ray tracing AO now. Okay. So I want to walk you guys through how you can even use this AO with inside of ZBrush. So I'm going to head back to the model here that we have. In fact, you know, here I'll sit on this for a second so you guys can, because of the stream, I'll sit on this a little bit. You guys can see the actual AO. Then again, that's the only thing that's on this model right now is the new tracing AO along with a material that's like a copper material that I put on the model right now. So just give you guys a little bit of idea. So let's go take a look at how you all are going to be able to use this. So again, let's go back to the version of this. Okay. And in my plugin, bam, I've got a new menu here right now and it's called ambient occlusion. So again, this is going to be a ray tracing. Okay, ambient occlusion. Okay, so let me, hold on, I see some people, the resolution. So is it everybody having a, uh, a bad stream, just to make sure? Just making sure. Is it at uh, 1080p now? I know I'm broadcasting in that. Okay, it's fine on Twitch. It should automatically um, be changed. I'm just looking at the text. All right, let me, let me, let me, hold on, give me a second then, since you guys are saying you're getting, let me do a couple quick things here. Let's, let me try something. 
Let me double check. So uh, I'm at, because obviously I can't see in all your guys' end what you're getting. So I will double check things. One second. Let's see what I got. Mm, okay. So let me try this. Hold on. I'll try this for you guys. Hold on. Let me do something. Let me change the resolution of this monitor for you all. Let's go a little bit more. Let's go a little bit bigger for you guys. How's that? Is that better for everybody? If I do that? On the fly changes, baby. I'm just trying to keep it to a lot of you. Good now, good now, good now, better now, better now. Fix, 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 better, better. Perfect. Easy fix. All right, so you guys can read everything now. <clears throat> All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to play with this. So let's turn off first the preview. So this is what we're looking at, okay? So I'm going to just going to click on a couple pieces here, and you can see there's nothing really going on. So now all I'm going to do is come over here, and I'm going to say compute, and now ZBrush is making a trace AO, and you can see it pops in. Now, this is being applied as a, a mask, okay? So there's going to be some advantages here. Okay, so I'm going to get to this where the advantages come in. But for right now, because it's being applied as a mask, I want you guys to really see what this AO looks like. So I'm going to go on my preferences. And this is something maybe that you guys didn't know either. So here you go, some stuff. So I'm going to edit. I'm going to bump up my mask all the way to five. Okay, so what that'll do is make my mask where it is 100% masked in this case, where the AO is the less light getting to. It's going to be pure black, right? By default, ZBrush is not going to show you like a full mask clearing, okay? So this is being done by, so if we go to a couple other sub tools, right? So you can see here's another one that was done. Again, this is just an AO, which is ambient occlusion for those that don't know. Here's something like that, right? So these are just examples of showing you now what you guys are gonna be able to do with this feature. So <clears throat> again, you're just gonna hit the compute button and then we've got some settings there. So let's play a little bit with the settings so you guys get what this is going to change and what this is going to do. The first things first, I would have a distance. So me, I probably want a little bit more distance in this because I want to make sure if I'm going to do this render, I want to make sure things are being picked up, okay? And then we have a samples. This is kind of more like quality in a way, right? So just more examples. I'm going to throw some more examples on this. And then I'm just going to say recompute that. And now it's going to give me a little bit different AO. I change the distance, okay? and I change the samples. Okay, so that, right, it's a little bit of difference there. Now, the big thing we have here, if you're going to do a true ray tracing AO, we need to take other things in, in, uh, <clears throat> in consideration. In this case, this particular model, James, has multiple subtools. So right now, you can see the AO is not factoring in the subtools right now. Okay, so I'm going to turn solo off. And then that's what this occlusion volume is going to be for. So there's going to be cases maybe you guys just want to make a mask, right? And then really make sure you just think a quick mask to do some of the AO. And then there's an occlusion volume. So I'm going to turn this on. And now what ZBrush is doing, you can see in the top left, look up here, look up here, the first one, in the top left, it's going through all the subtools right now and looking at where they are. So all 27 of his subtools, figuring out where they are in space. Right, and obviously, right now the sub tool I still have selected is the jacket. Right, so it's using the jacket as the main piece, and then looking through everything else and say, okay, where are all these other sub tools sitting? Because obviously, if you're going to be doing a ray tracing ambient occlusion, you need to factor in all these other sub tools, i.e., the jacket, right, his hand, the gun, like all that needs to be blocking the light. Right, so now when I hit compute, it's going to factor in all those items. So you can see that AO just changed big time right now because it's factoring in all the other items that you want it to factor in, okay? So this now, if we go solo, you can see pure black where there was a lot of subtools pretty much covering his jacket in this case, right? So this is what you guys are now gonna be able to do to do this. So it's really great way to get a different type of AO. So now you guys have Multiple, there's four ambient occlusions now in ZBrush, really, okay? 
But the other thing about this to remember, I'm gonna put my masking just down to back down to four, just because we're gonna transition out of this a little quick. The thing to keep in mind for this, again, it's a mask. All right. So I could say let's let's have some fun. Let's be artists. Okay, I'm just gonna I'm gonna do bold colors just so you guys can really see and wrap this around you. So number one, I'm using this as a mask because it's easy to export on a texture map as an AL using as a mask. But number two, inside a ZBrush world, I can say, you know what, let's add some color. So I'm going to right now add some green. So I'm going to throw some green, fill object. There. Perfect, right? And let's do let's do the opposite. Oh, yeah, hot paint. Oh, yeah. I'm going to inverse my mask. So I just flip the mask of the AO. So this is nice to be able to do this. This is why we've applied it as a masking so that you can flip it, right? And then fill the object. And then now if we go back to white, you'll see... Oh yeah, who has never wanted a hot pink ambient occlusion, right? So this is just giving you guys an example too that because it's a mask, you can actually color your model with this ambient occlusion, right? So there you go. So this is your new ambient occlusion being shipped with 2021.6, okay? So I'm gonna move on here to something else. Let's pick a different model. Okay, I'm gonna load a different model here. So let's load at, you know, look at a model that's near and dear to our hearts. Yes, it just ships with ZBrush. That's what I mean by near and dear to our hearts. Okay. And well, I'm going to grab a brush. Let's grab, let's grab a curve tube here. All right. For those that are, are ZBrush users, I'm sure you guys know how this brush works, right? You draw a curve out and you get a tube. Okay. So this is putting a tube along a curve. Uh, I'm going to change this up just a little bit because I want to have more going on than just some kind of tube, okay? So, hold on, I'm just, let me update my chat, because you guys are just, I like to keep up with the chat and see what you guys are saying, making sure I'm in the know, I'm in the know. Okay, so, <clears throat> I'm going to go to my stroke palette, right, and my modifiers, I'm going to turn on size, and I'm going to flip this curve vertically. So, this is going to allow me now, when I draw out, you know, I get something that looks like this. So, it's kind of like, tapering right so this is almost like starting to look a little bit because i'm putting on her it's starting to look a little bit like hair in a way okay so i'm a big fan of using brushes like this i use them in all my work all the time so we wanted to expand on this a little bit more and do more with this okay so what i mean by that is if we say we looked at this view all right and then let's say i draw something like this okay you're going to see this particular one it's just going right through her, right? Because this is this one is looking at planes, right? And then and draw it out. Okay, great. So what we've added now in the stroke palette, all right, we're gonna add now some new features in the stroke here. So the first one I wanna look at is the repel. Okay, so I'm gonna turn this on now. Let's put it at four. Okay, next to that there's gonna be a, a fall off. So I'm gonna be able to control this repel. The difference now is when I go to draw this out, you'll see that it actually comes off the head a little bit before it actually starts going down. So that rappel is looking at the geometry of this particular brush, in this case, the tube that I got coming down, and I'm telling it to look go at least four spans before you start actually turning and going. So in essence, you can see four rows of topology kind of going off the head first before it starts turning and going down, right? So that's what this new feature here. I'll turn on. I'll turn on my handy dandy magnifier. Always important. And you know, excuse me. I've I've been talking a lot these past couple of weeks, so that's why my voice is a little raspy. So I'm going to take a lot of water breaks. Okay. So besides that, besides the fall off, we've also added a bend start and a bend end. This is going to be really handy for things like what I'm going to be using throughout this stream. Okay. So when we draw something out like this, this is now giving us even a little more control, even more control of our curve. Okay. And so what I mean by that is when I go over a curve and I want to start editing it, you'll notice that when I edit this, you can see the only thing that's really adjusting now. And you see, I just keep moving it around in space. Do you see this part? nothing's changing. Only this part is changing. So where I clicked, right, 
down is not being moved and clicking up is the only thing that's being moved, okay? So this is what that new bending is doing for me. So you see that? Okay, I'll do it again. So you see if I do this, where are my brushes? This is the only thing that's updating. This is not updating. So I'm gonna undo this, okay? So that's what the bend start is doing. So obviously the bend end is the opposite. So if I draw this out, if now wherever I'm clicking on the curve is important, that's my point of interest, right? When I click on this, you can see now the beginning's not. So this makes it actually a little bit even easier to like position it inside the head. And then now see it. if I move, take the last point, I actually can move the whole curve now as a unit. So I don't have to switch anymore to right now where you to turn off the bend completely to do that. I don't have to do that anymore. I can just go to the end point and now I can kind of make an adjustment. And then you can go to this one, see, and now you're adjusting that. But because I have that on, only the bottom part, right? See, is being adjusted. So obviously, if I turn both on now, it's like the old bend. So now we've eliminated the bend that used to be there and we've broken it up into two, right? So now this is the way you guys have right now, all right? So this is gonna become really handy, all right? For sure, trust me, I, I'm gonna show you guys some stuff that I made as we go on here. Now, something else that becomes important Again, when I'm drawing this out, we're doing this, yes. So now that rappel is very nice, right? To be able to pop it off a little bit. So you can start seeing this could be very handy to start making some hair, right? But you see what's going on now when I try to do that. That stroke is being applied, but the mesh itself is going through her head, right? So we want to give you some more control for this. And what we've added now in the picker, by the way, guys, this menu is probably one of the most important menus in ZBrush. This is really part of the guts of the whole sculpting system itself. So when we're doing going to play in this menu, we're doing some stuff here to really start pushing the sculpting that's inside of ZBrush even more. So in the depth menu, there are now going to be more options. So in the version you guys have, there is the slider, which is just said Z. And then there's once Z and continuous Z. Now there's a closest Z and a farthest Z. Okay, so I'm going to start with closest. And what is this? What does this do for me, right? What's happening here? So let's again now, if you remember, when we looked at her like this, now when I draw this out, you'll notice, see, there's no intersection now really happening at all. Even though the only thing I changed was that actual menu portion. Again, I went in the picker and changed closest. So watch this. When I turn, you'll notice <clears throat> that when this little particle, this hair piece that let's say we're making, when it hits the part of the ear, that's in essence the closest mesh or vertex, if you want to go closest part of her to this curve. So you notice the rest of the curve stays parallel to that. This is going to come in handy when you guys start using this to do things like this. I want this to kind of follow. This allows like kind of almost like a realistic, more gravity type thing happening to our brush. I gotta, I gotta revisit this so I can move my mouse because I like I like having the chat in my disposal here. Okay. Right, let me move my mouse over here so I can have access to it. There we go. All right. So <clears throat> again, this is giving me this ability. Remember when we first started here, I was getting you know the mesh going inside, right? And then now you start thinking about I have a repelling, and you can see that bam, bam. Right? This is becoming very nice to be able to start using these curves. And in this case, obviously, I am using this kind of like hair a little bit, right? So, of course, then the other option, besides closest, is farthest, right? So, this is very different. Okay, what this is going to do, all right, is I'm going to go again from the side. Just It's just easier to see this for you guys. If I went up like this, okay, you're going to see that now happening. Right, so it's following the surface and then it found the furthest point for the curve. And now the rest of the curve is just staying along that part of this point. So in essence, from this view, because I drew from the side, this curve's following obviously the curvature of the head, but then because I started going off her head, it found, okay, this was the point. That's the farthest point of this curve right now. So the rest of the curve needs to follow that as well. So these are really making things, and you can see when I do it this way, see it found there that cheek and now it's falling trying to follow that cheek point so you see it's coming out to meet that farthest point 
So there's the cheek, you drop down from here. So here's where it's hitting the cheek. If you go down, see that point's trying to go back to that farthest point. So, okay, this is great and all. Okay, now that you guys know this, but let's, let's expand on this. Let's go down the hole with Alice, all right? So I wanted to take this and I kind of want to do more of like a stylistic lion, okay? So I'm going to turn on what I, oh yeah, yes. I was just going for, I really love the stylistic stuff that a lot of people do in ZBrush. So as an experiment, I want to do something a little more fun and go at this. Okay, so if you notice the hair on him, right, is a little different. It's not just a tube, okay? This is where some fun now begins. Now, if you take everything that I've already now been showing you guys, wait, wait, Lisa needs braces. Lisa needs braces. Lisa needs braces. Everyone, do it with me. Everyone do it. Where, where do we look? Where do we look? Look up here, people. Look up here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this off. Okay, and I'm excited. The, 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 oh, these are like, these have become near and dear to my heart for sure. Okay, so I'm going to hit brush. And then I'm going to introduce you guys to some new brushes here, which is the Curve Alpha. All right. So this is going to be pretty awesome now. So I can do this. Bam. I'm now, I don't know why I say bam. I just get excited. Okay. This is now giving me the same thing. I'm wrapping everything I just said, but now I've got an alpha giving me what goes along the curve. So forget just like a tube or a square. You guys pick whatever you want, man. Pick this. Let's let's pick. Let's have some fun. That's what we're here for. Let's pick a let's pick a, just a circle. Boom! It looks like the tube. Let's pick something else. I don't know. Let's pick this thing. And then, bam! Look at that. You can instantly start getting something that looks like various types of things. Even in the point, go look. Pick this alpha. It's got a little dot. Watch this one. I'm gonna undo this so we can just look at this one. Look at that. It just looks like strands of hair now, right? <clears throat> so all we're using now, we're taking everything I just said, which this brush. Okay, has already a lot of these features I just covered with you guys on it. But go nuts now. You guys, you guys figure it out. What do you want as an alpha and use it to start just doing? It was fun just grabbing alphas and seeing what I could get out of this. It is, let's see what the bricks do. Oh yeah. Like you'd be surprised what some stuff looks like with an alpha, right? So this has been a really great way to start. You can see now where I was going with this line with the stylized stuff, right? So this brush is, there's gonna be two versions of this brush, okay? There's gonna be one where you're drawing one curve at a time, okay? And you can see now it's one curve at a time. Or there's another one that says curve alphas, which now you can have multiple curves now too. So now not only do you have one, you can have this case four, and I can move these around and say, yay, this is so much fun, right? So this is a really great way of working for sure, okay? But let's keep, let's keep going. We're going on a journey. Let's keep going down this journey, right? So now you guys know we're using the, that repel. We're using the picker information, right? As you can see, closest is turned on. You can see my stroke palette now. There's only been start on, and then there's a lock start and repel. So we're using now all these. We just made a default brush, and now we've thrown the alpha at you. Right, as an extra beep, bonus for you all, okay? So <clears throat> here's something else that's really nice. So I'm gonna, let's draw, let's let's go back to, let's go back to the other one. Let's go back to this and let's go back to default, which is a star, all right? And so when I draw this out on my line, I'm doing this. You'll notice, right? And then now let's take a look at just that, right? You can see the profile of the star. And I know you guys wanna see the topology. So there's your topology of the star, right? Okay, so there you guys go. You've got the topology of the star, and of course, you've got this poly grouped off, right? So there you go. You notice where the star is sitting, right? It's sitting right there. So if I start because of what I'm using, you know, let's just start drawing a couple more of these out. We're doing this and say, perfect, I like that, I like that, right? And because I have closest on, you can see how the, the stroke, the way it's moving, see it's trying to find this curve, found the closest part of the mesh, which is this part. So this is like the line's got some serious problems right now. It's got, like, he's having a bad hair day on the safari right now, okay? There's some crazy things going on. 
so during the development of this, this is one of the biggest things with the team is, okay, if I'm going to be doing these curves, I want to have also maybe specify, you know, what to look at. So right now we're looking at this line head that I've got and I'm drawing them out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do, I'm going to do something unique and different that this is going to be a, a big help. Okay. I'm going to go to another version of the head. All right. So I'm going to turn this on and I'm going to turn on transparency. Okay. And let's see if you guys can see it. Can you guys see it pretty well? Let's see in the stream. Hold on, let me, let me look and see what you guys are seeing. Okay. I'll zoom in closer. So you guys are in there. Okay, so you can see, I made another version of the lion head and that's sitting inside, right? So it's sitting inside the head. Okay. And what I want to do is I'm going to use this head as my point of interest for the actual curves. All right. So I'm going to come up here to my undo history and you guys might be used to this with some brushes that we have, like the extractor brushes or the history recall. I'm going to hold the control key. I'm going to click right there. So this is using that same technology, that same thought process. So now what's going to happen if I go back to this lion's head, which is the bigger one, and I start drawing these out, right? You're going to notice that it's sitting inside the main lion head now. So you see, it's not sitting really on top of a lion anymore because I'm using undo history. So you see, it's going down and meeting this line, the third cell tool. Because I told it, look at the undo history, right? So the benefit to this, even if you don't do this trick where I went, you know, I know this now, I'm going to make another mesh where there's a line a little bit inside a little bit. And then that's the one I want the curve brushes to use as its driving force. So then the beauty of that is every time now I draw out, okay, so let's just show everything. So remember, we're having a bad hair day in the safari. If I continue drawing out now, you'll see that all these hairs are falling now more in the way that I would want them to fall, right? They keep looking now, not at this. They're not looking anymore at what I'm even drawing out right now on this lion. This is not what it's looking at anymore. It's looking at the other lion now more than anything. So that way I don't get this, you know, big hair popping off and going crazy. Okay. So this was huge for me to be able to do stuff like this. And of course, that's how I started getting to this guy and doing some stylistic looking lion head. Okay. So great. So now we've got more controls of curves. We got the ability to set alphas. We got the ability now for these curves to literally look at a different undo state within the same mesh or even use a completely different mesh to look at the undo state. So think of how many things you guys should be going, gearing in your heads right now. All right, let's take something that's near and dear to our heart. We all love them. We use them in every single stream. I gotta do it. He's gotta be in the stream. Mr. Earthquakey. Woo, yay, yay, yay. Okay, so I got Mr. Earthquake here. All right, and what I wanna do with this is watch this. I'm gonna make an alpha from Earthquake. It just makes sense. So this is giving you guys the mindset of you can pull up any model now, right? And make an alpha and you're actually going to be able to put that along a curve. Mm, 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 mm. We're going to get this to be even cooler. Okay. This is going to be way cooler. Okay. So I'm going to go to my alpha palette over here. We've been grabbing a bunch of alphas and I'm going to say from mesh, it's going to open up a window that's asking me, Hey, okay, here's your mesh that you want to turn into alpha. I'm looking straight on at him right now. So that's how it's being picked up. My alpha size is being controlled here. So this is 512 by 512. Okay. Well, let me take a drink of water. I'm just pausing for effect right now. Pausing for effect. Okay. So I'm going to say, I love, I love it. Someone just said the more, the older I get, the more I look like him. Who was that? <laughs> That's a good one. All right. So I'm going to say, okay. And what we have now, you guys can clearly see is an alpha. All right. Great. But watch this. I'm going to turn on now a new option, which is flat. I'm going to say two mesh. All right. So what I've done now is I've gone full circle. I've started with a 3d representation of earthquake, turned them in an alpha. And now I've said to Alpha, give me a mesh now based on that, right? So you can see this is a mesh. Look, see, it's 92,000 polygons right now, right? And what this is going to lead me into, wait for it, wait for it, okay? We'll go back 
excuse me, we'll go back to my lion, all right, just so we can use him again on this. We'll turn off boop, boop, this. Okay, we'll have that head on. I have become a fan of some new brushes. There are now two new brushes. There is now an extrude profile and extrude, extrude profile too. So I'm gonna click this. And the difference here, guys, this is no longer an alpha. This is real topology now. So you can see these are just like you guys are used to IMM brushes or VDMs. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take this, right? See all these now through here? Let's go back to this guy, all right? And then let's go, let's add him. So I'm gonna go brush and I'm gonna say from mesh, bam. I, 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 gotta, I gotta come up with a new, people talk amongst, I gotta come up with a new thing. I, I'm tired of saying bam, it's just annoying. So what, what is this doing? Watch, 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 This is great, this is great. I really, really enjoyed this brush a lot. So I'm just gonna go a little bit bigger. We're gonna drag him out, right? And now looking at him, let's look at what, what exactly happened here. I'll come in and you can see, we are actually using the mesh of the earthquake to now extrude along a curve. So it's no longer an alpha, it's physical topology being used. And then this, is going to give me the ability to even have polygrouping. So there's the end, right? So there's the end of that. And then the stroke itself will have its own. I'll turn this off, right? And then now you've got all this. So let's let me just let's get rid of the hairs that I've been messing with. We don't need all these. Let's let's keep expanding upon this a little bit more. Okay, so what this means, if I just grab anything here, I'll grab this looks, I like to call it the t-shirt, or it's a, it's t-shape, right? And now you're doing this. This is gonna look like that. I know you guys wanna see the topology. Now you're getting topology, so I can grab anything and boom. So this is now really low topology. Okay, so instead of using an alpha, what's the difference is that curve or the mesh going along is gonna be a, little, a lot more dense than this. And you guys can grab anything from here. So let's make one of these here. We'll turn off polyframe so you guys can start. And then I can, look, I can click the one and switch it. This is the other benefit of going this route over an alpha. I'm just changing this on the fly now. Pretty dope, I love it. So let's let's do let's do one together, okay? So I'm gonna grab a plane, here we go. Let's make the plane, let's, let's go really, really low, okay? So I'm gonna first go to my initialize. I'm gonna say no spans. Make that a poly mesh, so we got something like this. We're gonna switch to our Z modeler. Okay, because I want to use my Z model. I'm going to insert an edge loop there. Okay, and then I'm just going to quickly do some masking. Let's do something like that. Okay, let's go to here. Here we go. Let's do the extrude. Okay, I'm going to do an extrude. I'm going to do planar. We'll do parallel. So we got something like that. Let's go in here. Let's do an inset. Okay, so I've got an inset here. We're going to do an inset there. Let's go ahead and let's delete that. Let's make an actual hole there. Okay, so I don't know why I'm doing that, but let me make another one here. And let's take these now. So the idea here is we can go with this approach now, where I've got something that's pretty low polygon. It is only 14 polygons compared to like an alpha, obviously. You're using pure black and pure white, okay? So let's go back to, you know, level. let's stay on this, and let's go back first and select our brush. We gotta add it to the brush. Okay, so I'm gonna come in here again. You can see we put him at the end of this brush. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna look at this, okay, because this is how I wanna pick it up. And then I'm gonna go to brush, and I'm gonna say from mesh, and now we've got this one in there. So of course, now if we go back to Mr. Lionhead, right, and we start drawing this out, we are now doing this. Right, and you can see this shape that I've kind of made. And again, once again, there's actually, if you look at this, there's all the internal topology in there as well, because the mesh that I made from the Z modeler, it had a hole in there, right? So I'm having that continue through this whole curve, okay? So this really opens up some extremely different ways to make some custom brushes either with your topology or if you guys prefer just painting with pure black and white alphas okay so this is pretty 
pretty handy, okay? So let's continue moving on, and I wanna show you guys some other new features, and we're, we're gonna come back to the other extruding brush. We're gonna, we're gonna come back to it. So I wanna move on to something else for you guys. So excuse me, I'm gonna take a quick, take a, take a quick water here, okay? Hold on. I'm gonna run out of water before we're out with the stream here. Okay. So as an artist, you know, and all of us that are using ZBrush, you know, we're always looking to start somewhere. There's got to be somewhere you start. Like, where do I start with something like this? A lion's head. So I wanted to go and ex expand upon this a little bit more. I want to do maybe something that's like a tiger, right? Like this. And so the, the challenge always is where do you begin? Like, where do you start when you're trying to do something? Like, that's that's one of the most difficult things to when I have conversations with a lot of artists. Like, I don't know where to start to make something. So as always, we're thinking about this. We're thinking an artistic approach. Where is a good way to start and maybe making something like this, okay? So I'm just gonna switch to, uh, so this is something that I did. I wanted to make kind of, in essence, I wanted to make like a tiger that was starting to walk a little bit. And then of course, I was gonna go start using the brushes I've already shown you guys, but I need a base mesh first. I need an actual tiger body before I get to everything else, all right? So bam, sphere, oh, it's just gorgeous, beautiful, beautiful work, love it, okay? And I'm gonna switch um, to, let's just switch out of the extruder right now, let's just only look at the clay buildup. But what I'm going to do is introduce you guys to another set of new brushes. Okay, so so far we've had an alpha, new alpha brushes, we got new extruder brushes, and now we've got some new brushes that are called mesh from mask in essence. So we are going to, I'm going to start with Mesh Balloon, okay? It's a good one, and you're going to see why it's called Mesh mesh Balloon here now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just start drawing out something and saying, yes, 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 wow, wow, and then Mesh, right? So all I did was draw out a mask, and whatever that mask is, I am getting now that shape from the mask, okay? And this is called mesh balloon because it looks like a, looks like a balloon, right? So now I've got a nice, and you can see this is actually sitting in the middle of the world right now. And there's something that I did that I'm gonna walk you guys through all of this. The, we're just tipping the, we're just tipping the iceberg of 2021.6 right now. We're just tapping into it right now, okay? So let's, let me undo that again. So I gotta have a surface kind of to work at, work with, okay? So I'm hovering over, right? So I'll go with a little bit bigger brush size so you guys can see where this is going. I'm holding the control key and I'm gonna click on this and just start masking something out. And if I just let go, I get this. So if you look, I've got symmetry. Bing, 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 bong, 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 right? So this is working symmetrical, number one. Okay, so why was this one different than the original drawing out that I did, of course? Because when we're building something, especially for me, if I'm building, like I was trying to build, bones of this tiger, I would probably want everything in the middle, right? And then their legs would be symmetrical. So while you're drawing out, why I was drawing out, this time it's doing this. And if like I'm not holding the keyboard anymore. Okay. So what I'm going to do is just now hold the shift key. And when I let go, we automatically put the new mesh dead center of the world. So this is sitting dinner right now. <laughs> dinner. I just made up a word, which always happens in my streams. So this is sitting in the middle. So all I can do now as an artist, right? I can say, okay, there's that. Let's start making maybe, okay, I want to make maybe a neck in here. Hold the shift key, boom. Now I want to make maybe a little bit of a head. Hold the shift key, boom, right? And look what just happened there. <gasps> what? You guys see that difference? Let me rewind. Okay? No, let's rewind. Watch that. Okay, wait for it, everyone. This is, Elisa needs braces. So I'm gonna draw out a shape, okay? Perfect, got it. Now I'm gonna draw another shape. Oh, what? It just welded. So what we've done now is not only can you just draw out shapes like I just did, right? I drew this shape first and then I drew another shape, right? And then I drew another shape, but this time I wanted those to weld together. So I can keep drawing stuff here and weld them together. So because I have not moved my, and this, is, and this is the thing, I haven't moved my camera, ZBrush is remembering that last lasso that we did, okay? 
And now when I click the shift key, it actually welds. It works a little bit like, think about it guys, the easiest sense I can put this, think about live booleans, right? So think about we're booleaning this together now, okay? We're having a Boolean ability now to this. Okay, so again, let me do it again just so you guys comprehend and wrap this around what I'm doing here. So I'm drawing out a shape. Again, hold the control key. I'm going to hold the shift key so it gets put in the middle, right? So I'm going to do this, hold the shift key. Then I'm going to draw another version of this. I want to maybe put a little more volume in there. I don't like the way I did. Hold the shift key. Boom, we added volume. So what does this mean for you guys? So guess what? You can also draw out and cut through. <laughs> I'm excited, you're excited. We are making something that looks like nothing right now, okay? So, because I'm not moving the mesh, I have the ability now to subtract out. I have the ability to union out, of course, as well, right? So, somehow I saw somebody notice it. What we've also done now is we've done an update to the lasso, all right? So, when I'm drawing this out, you guys, somebody has already seen it. We have added lazy mouse to the lasso, okay? This is gonna make you guys have even better lasso. So what does that mean? Guys, it's also available for anywhere you use the lasso, including, including your selection lasso. So you can see here, this is normal, right, selection. Now I can come in here and turn on lazy mouse and you can see, look how much smoother of a lasso I can start to get. So not only do I have it now on here, right? I can have it also on the selection. So again, I'm now using lazy mouse. So then all your future here's for lazy mouse come in effect now. So not just that, okay? I'm gonna start calling this lazy mouse 2.0, darn it, okay? Because we've also done this, watch this. So again, I have this brush selected right now. I can now do sharp, changes to the mesh and let go and then I get that right because obviously if I'm doing this ballooning I won't do this so let's let's now put this in a better let's put this in better light now let's really use this in a better so I'm going to load something that I have here grids I'm going to load so here you go right so I got this what I would say is like a little bit tiger walking I'm going to position this sphere right here okay so I got a, a reference image in, in here and now think about it people this is so easy I can say, okay, I'm gonna come from here. I'm gonna say, all right, I want this to come out through there, and I'm just going to trace the main portion of the body, right through here, this, right? And then we make a mesh, right? So that's what I want, okay? And then now let's maybe make the arm here. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna do the arm, something like this, okay? I'm gonna let go, I got a different mesh. If I don't move my camera, I'm gonna start going, all right, let's do more of the arm, but I'm gonna hold the shift key so it welds that arm together. And then, you know, I'm gonna do the paw now. And again, because I have the lazy mouse, I can really get a little bit different defining. So if I turn off my four grid, you can see what I'm getting is two legs, right? And then this one is a separate piece from this, right? So I'm using the ability to mask this out and just in essence, in this case, trace it, right? I'm just tracing again. I'm just going, starting from a sphere. You need to have something, and right? So I can even hold the control key and then use the space bar. And I'll just start drawing out here, which would be probably better for me. And just do this, and do something like this again. And then if I hold the shift key, it snaps that body to the middle. So you can see it's in the middle, right? And now from this point on, I wanna now make the arms, right? So very handy, very cool way now for us to block out. Again, like I started this, I want the ability to quickly block out some shapes because I want to get to sculpting as fast as I can and maybe start using some other brushes. And now I want to start maybe making the neck in here and bingo, bingo, right? And then now make the head. And I'm going to say I don't want that welding, so I'm not going to hold the shift key. And what I'm getting, if I turn the floor grid off, is I'm getting these meshes here, right? I'm getting individual pieces now along, so I can decide to do what I want to do with those, okay? So besides us also adding the ability with lazy mouse, when you guys are going to start using this brush, we actually added another slider 
for the lasso as well, which is our smoothness. So this is just saying how smooth should this start to get? So you can affect the smoothness here and it's going to start giving me, you know, a different result. Okay. So, okay. This is fun, right? We're having a good time, right? It doesn't, it doesn't end there. Okay. It does not end there. So let's, let's go, let's go further. Let's go, let's take a let's jump down let's jump down here and go a little bit more so let's recap real quick i have the ability now to make a new mesh which is now this is our mesh below i can add to the existing i can subtract from the existing okay and in fact i can even if we wanted to right we can do more than just that and so what i mean by that is let's look at a couple other examples here let it snow let it snow let it snow so i wanted to try a little experimenting with this version Okay, and I'm going to switch right now to skin shape four so you guys can really see it. I wanted to make, in essence, like clip art, right? So I just, and this is, this is, this is what I do when we're making something, right? So when I render this out, this is going to look like something that's more like from a 2D world, in essence, but it's really 3D. So obviously the benefit here is it's 3D. I can change the positioning, do what I want, and then render, right? So I wanted, I, I wanted to experiment with this a little bit. So this was some of my first experiments. So I did another one, here's a bird, right? And then you can see there's different colors happening in here, right? And then this is really trying to just really simplify it. And you can see the meshes this time though, they're not ballooning out, right? They're very, they're more flat, okay? And then I wanted to take that um, another step further. And then, so I did this guy, because I was doing a tiger. I said, hmm, I wonder what I can do with this. So if you look, this is really, this reminds me of any of that kids, you know, this reminds me of you can go to a store and buy like these wooden cutout things that are flat planes and the kids put them together and become a 3D geometrical. Oh man, I would love to get some sound effects. You have no idea. Okay. Love some sound effects. PNC brush. Okay. So this is just stacking these planes, but this is my end result that I want. Right. Okay. So this is really what this looks like. If I render this out, okay, I'm again in this sense make something that looks a little bit like a 2D image, but we're 3D. Okay, there you go. All right, so cool, great, and all, but where I really had some fun with this is this guy. Okay, so let's switch the material. Let's bring this guy down. So this. Okay, what you're looking at now, I would say, I would say about 85% of this, 90% of it maybe, even 90% of it is all done using the new features. Okay, so this is just some kind of mech that I wanted to start making or like a mech suit that's going to be on a person, right? So I wanted to have some fun with this, all done in this version with the brushes that I'm already so I've highlighted, but there's even more than that. So I started with just something like this, okay? I got something going on like this, all right? And uh, let's just first, let's look at a chest area, okay? I'm gonna now switch from balloon and I'm gonna switch to mesh project, okay? So watch what this one's gonna do for us, all right? I'm going to now, because I have lazy mouse, I'm gonna start drawing this out, hold the shift key, hold the shift key, hold the shift key, uh, let's go this way now and now hold the shift key. Go. Bam. Oh, I gotta stop the bam. There we go. Okay, what's happening now is I am creating a mesh that's actually following the underlining surface. Okay, so this is projecting the new mesh. So instead of making like we were making just blobs of, in essence, balloons of meshes, this is following the curvature. Up to like, let's say we switch to, let's say we switch to this guy, just to give you guys again another uh, look at this. So let's just look at him. If I now do this and let go, well, first of all, let me delete my subdivision levels and do this, you're going to see it, it's trying to match him. And right now, I've got some settings cranked up. Okay. So if we go back to this, you'll notice for this, I've set this brush up for this guy in particular for my stream. Notice there's a nice bevel. If I turn on polyframe, I've got polygroup in here, right? So I've got ability to look at polygroups. So what we've done here, besides the ability just now to look at this and project, 
we've got a new menu in the brush palette, okay? And it's called mass mesh modifiers, okay? So when you hold down the control key, because I'm looking at now these mesh project, I can actually change my resolution. So this is where I can control the resolution of the topology that's going to be used. I can control my smoothness and I have a bevel control. So obviously if I turn off the bevel, right? And then now if I go to make something, this is obviously going to project, but see, there's no bevel there right now. Okay. So there are multiple ways for me to control this. Number one, your Z intensity, like it's cranked up right now really high. So if I want this to be a little bit lower, I can make it a little bit lower, right? And then now it's see not as thick. Right, so my Z intensity is going to help control the thickness that I'm making, number one. Okay, number two in the brush palette, we've got depth control, and you got to say it that way depth, depth. Right, so if I crank this up, this is now sitting on the surface. So you can see that, see how it's kind of sitting a little bit closer on the so, in essence, this now is extruding out from the mass portion that I made and sitting on the surface a little bit like this, right? So now we've got, we've got to control the, control the thickness. We've got to control to put where it sits, right? So you got to be holding the control key when I do this, where it sits within the space, okay? And then now, of course, number three, we now have some other controls. We can control the resolution, we can control the smoothness, and we can control beveling. And of course, all these three new sliders will work even with the balloon one I showed you guys, okay? So I'm going to change this to, uh, let's make this be this. Let's go back to putting a little bit more bevel on this. So we'll go back to 0.5, all right? And again, let's draw out something. Let's do this. So again, I'm going to make another little chest plate here, I think. I'm going to go across. I'm holding the shift key, holding the shift key, holding the shift key, coming straight across, and then letting go, right? I can get that. All right, you know. So again, this is me deciding what I want to do with this, and then I can let go, right? So I forgot to turn the symmetry on, okay? So I'm just gonna mirror weld this across, okay? And because I know now this is projecting to the surface in essence, right? That there's some projection happen. Let's do something else. Let's this time turn on symmetry, and let's go maybe from here. And I wanna make another surface. I'm gonna go from here to there to there. And I'm going to come up like this, come up like this, and come up like that, and then let go. And now I've got both on either, either side of this chest plate that I'm starting to make here, okay? And now here's the beauty of this, people. This is, <clears throat> this, is where I, this is why I really love this, okay? And for those that know me, I'm a big hard surface buff guy, okay? So now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do this, hold the shift key, hold the shift key, hold the shift key, and I'm going to go, let's go there, alt key. Right, and what I want to do now is I want to start controlling this a little bit more to have things, other items, start to happen. So I can build more surface, and you can see it's rippling on that. Okay, or I can keep drawing new stuff out for us, right, and keep building upon this, right, and then just I decide what I want to do. So I would do maybe something like maybe this now, maybe like this, and maybe like this, and bam. Right? This one mesh that's the new mesh, okay? I can actually subtract from it, and now I'm, I'm getting an updated bevel to this. So let's do that again. So this is the one. I haven't moved my camera. So I'm going to start in here, and I'm going to I want to go straight across now. Let's go up. And again, I'm using the shift key, and then now I hold the alt key, and that cuts out of the surface. Okay, I don't like what's going on here anymore. So I'm going to come across. I can even move with the space bar, draw it out. Now shift key, shift key, right? Hold the alt and then it cuts it out. Then I can change my mind once again and go, how about let's do this again, shift key, shift key, shift key, and this time, right, this time I'm gonna hold the shift key, and now I've added to that one. So I can do more than just that, right? I can do not just draw out, but I can subtract it, I can add to it, okay, and do other items to this, okay? so. What I can also do, people, is this is a projection brush. So instead of using the lasso, how about I use a circle stroke? So now I'm going to do this. Hold my L key. Bam, I just made a circle through there. And my bevel is all updating. Everything's good to go. So this means I can also use rectangle. 
and then space bar and then alt key, right? And then figure out what I want to do with this. There's going to be other ways. So I saw someone also asking more things. I personally, I'm going to go backwards, back to this. I also enjoy when I'm doing this, instead of lasso, I really like using the curve, okay? Because this allows me to say, I can get a curve and I double tap the alt key. And chi, I see, man, 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 chi, you're in here, right? I like using this to make this kind of surface. It's just, for me, it just makes pretty good sense. I really, I use this a lot. So for that Mac I pulled up, which we'll pull up again, I can start really cutting things out in here, right? Make Making different pieces, that would be pretty cool to make. So again, holding control key, Again, I got to click on the surface that I want to edit, right? And then I can space bar this if I want to and say, maybe do something like this, all key, all key, right? And then bam, oh, this is so great. So it looks so great. Once I move the camera, okay, this is now only going to make a new surface. So now that I've moved the camera, I'm now making now maybe another surface that does this. And I want to build on top of that now and project on top of that, okay? And then now maybe, again, let's switch to rectangle. And okay, I'm just gonna do something like, let's do a little surface change there. I don't like that. Let's go, okay, so I don't like how this is staying a perfect square for me right now. So I'm going to come in here and say not squared and not centered, I'll say right now, and say maybe I want something more like that in there. So you can see how I can start really building upon the surface in here, right? And having some fun with it. So what this also means, let me put back these two options back up. You can also grab an alpha. That's right. Drag out, right? You get this? Got an alpha. What? <laughs> I'm going to take a water break on that one. I'm going to take a water break on that. So you guys got to think about this. We've got the ability to make circles. We've got the ability to draw whatever you want with lasso. We've got the ability to use the curving. We've got the ability to use a rectangle square. And now we have the ability to make an alpha even too. And yes, your cor your, sharp, your corners will be able to get sharper, but I'm going to keep moving on here with this, okay? All right. So this is nice. This is a great way for me to work. I'm having a blast working this way. Everything, right, is one sub-tool. Normally, I'm not going to work like this, okay? I'm probably going to work in a lot of sub-tools, especially when I'm doing some kind of hard surface stuff for sure, right? So I probably take the time to split this off right, and make this a new self-tool. So now, now you've got the body and you got this being its own self-tool, okay? And from this point now, let's go back to, I'm gonna use the curve, I really like using the curve. So again, recapping now, if I do this, right, and I let go, see, it's actually projecting to everything. It's seeing this sub-tool and this sub-tool, right? So it's seeing both, it's seeing the body, okay? And it's seeing the other parts that I actually drew out. So me, I want to use one of my Finzi brush, and then this is where it's going to be uh, pretty cool. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to say this is going to be pretty cool. So I'm going to turn off this other chest piece that I was making, and let's, let's expand upon this, okay? I'm going to turn on live booleans now, all right? <clears throat> what the heck is that going to do? Well, let's find out. Let's, let's see what that does now. So I'm going to say, all right, let's go again. Let's go across. I'm going to go straight across. To there, to there, go there. Let's go right about there. Let's change it up this time, and then let go. Okay. So right now I get the same thing, right? You can see it's part of the sub tool. Okay. But this time, let's redo that and go again. Cross, cross here. Go here. Go here. Okay. And this time, I want a new sub tool. So I now automatically just made a new sub tool right there okay and this is happening because we took the ideas here with these brushes and now because we have live booleans on we're going to be able to do more with this now okay so now i can even do this kind of stuff we'll mirror weld this over okay let's not locally mirror weld this over all right and now because this is a separate sub tool and because i have live booleans i can say mm, you know what i want to add a little something right here okay so I'm gonna go, let's put a little bit, maybe in there and there, and let's add something there. Okay, good. Let's add something else. Hey, let's add something else right here. So I'm gonna go here, 
let's make a little, just a little notch in here and do this. So what's happening here, if you guys look, you can't even tell I was done with three separate strokes, right? So let's undo, let's put our symmetry back on and do that same thing now, right? So because I have live Booleans activated, we are doing something else with these brushes now. We are no longer looking at necessarily each piece as its own entity in essence, right? So I'm looking at this different, this particular subtool has in essence three meshes as you guys can see in here. So this gives me the workflow like, okay, I don't even have to worry about camera movement at all anymore, right? I can just be free and do whatever I want. You know, maybe, you know, this, I want this to come out a little bit more, follow his body a little bit more this way, have that pop out. So we got something like this. So what this means is because I have live booleans turned on, let's do something else. Let's go, let's go here, let's go here, let's go here, and come across here, and then do that. <gasps> what? Oh, I love it. I love it. This, is, this is a big one for me. Yes. So maybe I'll come across here now, do this, do this, do this, and then boom. So you see what's going on here? I'm making a new sub tool right that's now i'm using it as automatically as a subtractive right so now i am looking at all the surfaces for a subtractive and i'm subtracting into those surfaces right so if, in essence if i was okay if at this point i'm like okay see it's a different self like ah, i don't like that one i don't like that one. you know what let's turn off the body now and let's just look only at this piece right and once again okay this is the piece that i'm making right here and now I'm going to say, all righty then, let's do it. Let's make another, I'm going to go again, control, okay, make another. And you can see why I like this brush, and then hold the Alt key, and then you have something like this happening, okay? And because this is projecting onto the surface, you can see it's stopping at the edge of this. It can't continue on because there's no now there's no underlying surface below it, right? So let me do this a little bit bigger for you guys. You guys can see. So if I did say let's uh, let's do something like really dog in here. Let's do something like this. Come like this and come like this. And then I'll hold the Alt key, and you can see it's not going all the way to the end here. And of course, this if we delete this, this is making a new sub tool, right? So I want to have this ability now to start really messing around with this, right? And then of course it's going to work symmetrical. So I can keep moving around and say, all right, let's do some more design here. Come like this, maybe I want to come up like this now, come across, come up, come across, and hold the alt key, right? And then it digging, digging, digging in. Okay? And I, I keep I turn off symmetry again. I keep it off. But uh, that doesn't matter to me. I don't right. You can see now where I'm going. And then now I don't want to dig in now. Now I just want to now I want a nice surface through here, like this, and then just let go, right? And now that's sitting in the same subtool, right? Because I just let go. That's what live booleans is going to allow me to do. So instead of that, right, I don't want it to sit in the same subtool. I want it to be a new raised surface, right, in here. So I'm going to now shift key, right, and then now that's a raised surface. So then all I'm doing now is creating new subtools is what's happening here. And then I can continue this process and start now maybe I want to cut in here. Right, and then now I only want that to happen actually on that one. So now it's only happening on this. And again, we're projecting into this. Okay, so I'm gonna mirror weld this over. I keep my hand keeps I keep hitting the shirt. Right. So besides that, people, this is projecting to the surface. Right. I can instead of telling it to project to the surface, I'm gonna go to the picker. Right, and right now, see it's saying continuously. I'm going to do a once Z, so only once. Okay, and so what I want to do now is maybe come up over here in this area, and I'm going to now go. Let's go across, out like this, out like this, out like this. Maybe yeah, let's do a little something a little different. Okay, and hold the Alt key. What that has done now is it made a surface that just has thickness. Right, it's not projecting anymore. Okay, so it's not. It's not projecting and 
I mean, that's following the curve. So here, if I do here, I'll do another one right here. You guys can see what's happening in here, right? You can see that surface that's being made. See, it's sitting right there. It's no longer following the curvature. So what I like about this, okay, is if I go back to this one, I can then, because this was made, I can use this and start really messing with this. And because I know the way the topology is being made, I can even edit this. So I don't want it projecting the surface because I just want to do this, where it's kind of going through the whole surface. I right? have the ability to mess around with this. And now it's a flat surface that is not, right, following the curvature of what I've made here. Right? So by me adding a live Boolean aspect, I can either make this brush, which is our mesh, project. So that's why we have two. So instead of me clicking the picker, there is also a mesh extrude, which the picker by default is set to once. Okay, so when I'm using this, I start drawing out something, right? And when it gets made, it's just automatically giving me that. And you can see there's straight surfaces. So obviously if I have something like this, I can turn on my gizmo and I can actually change the width of this on the fly. I can move it where I want. And you can start to see, you can really get some crazy cool design elements and some very fun parts going on. Now, I told you I was going to go back to some of the brushes, okay? So I'm going to go back to a brush, all right? So this by default is set to a subtractive right now. I'm now going to go back. Let's go back to our extruder brushes. So you remember we got the extrude profile. There's also extrude, extrude profile two, okay? And then, guys, this is highlighting one of my favorite things to do with live booleans, okay? This is what I love about live booleans, okay? I now have a brush that you guys know is extruding geometry, right? So I'm gonna grab some, I like this and watch this. I'm just gonna draw this out anywhere, right? And I want this in essence to be a part of what I'm working on in here, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do, okay, this Boolean is only affecting right now a certain portion, okay? So for example, this one here, right? If you remember, I got this, it's affecting only this piece right here because okay, I made it a start group. So now if I do that same thing and we do this, right, I want to tell ZBrush to start using this, in essence, as a way to start looking at the surface. So you can see we're drawing now on this. Okay, I found this to be very useful for me. So let's just go back into this area and let's not grab that. Okay, we're going to grab that. And then this is the mesh that I'm going to start playing with. And then I just grab different brushes and start drawing out things. And I'm going to start saying, okay, the depth of this isn't where I want it. Okay. So again, I was playing with all of this. So I want to probably start playing with all of that and start drawing through all this and going through <clears throat> and drawing out these curves. Okay. But instead of doing it this way, I want to start maybe even just draw out a curve and I can get stuff like that. Right? So I want to start having that ability, okay, for me to start working with these. So I'm gonna play with the brushes. I'm gonna reset all my brushes in here. Okay, <clears throat> so I'm using this extrude profile in essence to draw where I want things to sit, right, in space. Okay. And then you obviously have the ability to use a control picker, right? So I have those brushes combining in a way to start working on these meshes, okay? And really start to do some really cool ways of working. So in the combination of now building base messages a little bit, okay? And building curves out with this, you can really start, if we go back to my guy, let's go back to my mech guy here, right? You can start seeing some things that I've done throughout here and start working on all these pieces, right? So I turn this on, right? I started making groups through here and I got a bunch of things. Some things are subtractive, some things are not subtractive, right? And I wanna start drawing on these and start working with these a little bit, right? And start working with this. So this is kind of how I started getting to all this point, right? And then these brushes, I started even using this 
So we're looking at, because we're getting polygroups here, right? I can show, in essence here, we'll show just this mesh. Right? And I can grab something like stroke. Right? And then I would say, well, how about I go to curve because I'm dealing with the curve functions. I'm gonna say border. I get a frame like that and I can tap. And now I get something like this, right? And now I got a framing going around this. Right? And you can see all that is updating. So I'm using now these profile, profile curves to give me more involvement here with this, okay? So it, it really opened up a lot of workflows, okay? So I'll go back, let's go back again to this guy. So you guys can see, this is how, again, why I said, you know, 85, 90% of, okay, is working to give me this, right? So all these hard surface pieces were made either with that extruding ability, either with the projection or either with the flatness. And I started using those profile curves to cut into the surface and also creating outlining surface. All right. So we're not done. There's still some more brushes that we've added to this, but you know what? You've been listening to me for like an hour. Okay. Forget me. I want to bring somebody in special. I want to bring in somebody new into the stream. Okay. So this is a big, this is big for you guys. This person has never really streamed like this with us before in past streams. So this is going to be pretty awesome. And they're going to show you, I like to call the Bob Ross sculpting brushes because as artists, a lot of times we see things just when we're making something, right? We're just making stuff and we'll catch things and get what we want to get to, right? So what I want to do now is introduce you all to Mr. ZBrush himself, Pixelator. So let's bring him in to the stream. There he is. Hi, Paul. Uh, this is a great introduction. Thank you. I, I'm really excited. I like what you've shown, but there's more brushes that I want to show, and I'm hopefully people will get excited about those brushes as I am. But from the brushes that you've shown, Paul, which one is your favorite one? The one I was just playing with is one of the extreme profile. Yeah. I, I knew that this is what you're going to say. But however, if you can see my screen now, can your brush do something like this by drawing a curve and doing this? Is your brush capable of doing that? Little trees there happen. So I like to call it Bob Ross brushes. Yeah, what about this? Nice. Yeah. Can you do that? Well, no. I can continue. Obviously, don't I, I don't have to stop, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back, trace to the origin of this brush, and then explain how we got to this one and what's the intention of this brush. So I'm going to do an undo. And what I'm going to do instead of actually working on this sphere, let's load just a startup a model that would be let's suppose the demo female head. Now, what I want to do is to, to explain the, the origin of the new brush. Um, as everyone familiar with ZBrush knows how powerful the snake hook brush is, which is basically in order to select it, you press the B, then S and H in order to select the snake hook brush. That is a very powerful brush, especially when working in conjunction with Sculpture Pro because it allows you to modify the surface, create shapes by pulling and pushing until you get the shape that you, you're interested in. And then I was thinking, okay, the snake hook brush is really powerful. However, it's doing the impact on one point with the radials around it. Can we extend on it? Can we make it even more powerful? And then obviously curves. What if we can take snake hook brush and apply it to a curve? Well, can we do that? Yes, this is exactly what the new brush is and not Surprisingly, it's going to be called snake curve because it's based on the snake hook and it's going to use curve. How do you select it? Simple, you press B in order to select the brush palette, S in order to select the snake hook brush. And then right now I currently have five variation of this brush because it's heavily controlled by the modifier settings and each one will produce a different effect. For now, I'm going to use, let's say variation number two, just for demonstration. How to use this brush, you're basically selecting the starting point, the size of the brush that you want. You draw a curve on the shape, and then you click on the curve and you drag. And now the, the brush is going to do its work basically just like a snake hook brush, and it's going to pull the surface. It doesn't have to be a simple, it could be a more complicated curve. It could be something like this in order to be able to create this. And obviously you can continue working on the same surface uh, again and again, and just adding more more extrusion to that. 
And this is really fun to do because when you're doing that, it's so fast and giving you the impression of new surfaces and ideas that's coming up. In fact, let, let's go and create something simple with using this brush. Let's start with the sphere again. Let's suppose I want to use this in order to be, be able to add extrusion to a surface. Let's create something simple. Uh, probably uh, let's start with something really easy would be, let's say a fish, a whale or something like that. I'm going to first use, Paul, the, the brush that you introduced uh, which is assigned to the masking brush, the mesh balloon. I love that one because it allows you to create a shape. You just draw the outline and then you get a, an immediate instant 3D object out of it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to select that brush. Now, I'm, what I want to do is draw roughly an outline of a fish, a whale, killer whale, whatever it's going to come. I'm just going to basically uh, click, uh, hold the control key in order to start the brush. Now, what I want to do is I want to start in a different location. I'm going to hold the space bar, move the starting location, and then I'm going to draw a shape. Uh, basically, let's say something like that. And then I'm going to hold the shift key in order for it to be completed. So now what I have is I have this shape at the center of the universe. Um, so obviously, it's not really the shape of a killer whale, but this will be will do for now. Uh, let's add some color to it. Let's make it a bit darker. It will be more appropriate. Let's say something like that. And then I do color fill object. And then I'm going to maybe add some, uh, the usual white marking that you would find on killer well, even though again, the shape is not, but it will do for this. So I'm going to press the, the control key. I'm going to draw maybe something like this, go down. And then again, as you notice, because now I have the capability to use the lasso as I am drawing the mask, I'm getting a very nice clean curve out of this. I'm going to inflate the mask, selecting maybe a brighter color and then do color fill object. So this will be the beginning. Well, also usually killer whale will have a, a white marking in here. So I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to um, I'm going to draw. Let's say this is the kind of marking that I want. Maybe something like this. And I'm going to hold the space bar in order to move it to an, into location. And let's say I want to drop it about here. And I want again to to, to flip the uh, the masking and color fill object. Okay, we got this thing. Just for, for, for clarity, I'm assuming the eye would be somewhere in here in this creature. And I'm going to use the, again, the, the mesh balloon, but instead of using the lasso, I'm going to select this circle just because I want something round in here. So let's say something about here. So there we go. We have the basic shape of, of, of the, the, well, what could have been, a, could have been a, a killer well if the shape was, but, but this is good enough for what we want to present. What I want to do now is I want to create the fins, probably something in here and in here, and maybe one on the top. Um, we, without the previous brushes, I obviously could have done this by masking an area and using the move brush or the, the snake hook brush and keep adjusting it. But with the new brushes, this become much easier. I'm going to select variation number one of the snake curve brush. Now, what's different between variation number one of the snake curve brush is that when I draw the curve, it knows where the curve starting and ending. And then when I'm going to pull on the curve, the starting point will move much faster than the ending point. But why? Because this is going to, to force the curve to actually start turning. So all I have to do is I draw the curve in the correct direction, click on the curve. And then as I'm pulling, I'm getting this turning of the, the curve, just really very easy. I obviously can, if I want to continue, I can continue embellishing it, oh, but let's move it. Let's move, for example, for this one, I'm going to draw this and I'm going to move. In fact, I don't need to move that fast. I'm going to move something like that. So I got those, this, those two extrusion. And again, I can continue. I don't have to stop in there. If I want to modify this slightly, slightly I can draw another curve in here and maybe add something to here. So. What I have is I have those this fin. I can do the same method in order to create a top fin, but in fact, what I'm going to do, again, I'm going to use the balloon brush again, I, but this time I'm going to select the lasso tool. So I'm going to, the fin should be somewhere in here. So I'm, I'm just going to draw roughly the shape. And I'm going to hold the shift key because I want it to create in the center. So right now, when I'm looking in this direction, I see that it's centered, but it's obviously just not too wide. So something like that will be good. And then I can just um, uh, even dynamash in order to combine everything together. 
Now, on top of this thing, the the shape of it right now, it's too static. Maybe I can use some of the deformation in order to give this a little bit more dynamic. Um, the deformations are very powerful. There's so many deformation capabilities within ZBrush on the mesh that it's currently selected. In this case, I'm going to use the bend curve, which I, I like it very much. It's basically what it allows you to do. It's, it's imaginary curve that is drawn through the, the, the mesh that is being selected. We can control how many points going to be in there. So let's go for five points. So currently I can see five points along this axis and they basically, each one of them is responsible for part of this mesh. And now I'm going to be using this in order to deform. I need to decide now if I want the head to actually go down or up. Well, I, I like this up, let's say something like that. Maybe shape it. Let's give it a, or maybe just Play with the curve in order to get the shape. Mm, okay, I think I like this one. Okay, so that will do. I can maybe make it longer or even shorter. And once I'm done, I can exit the formation and I have this, this object um, which I'm using, which I find the, the capability to use those things in order to extrude surface is, is so fast and so easy. And right now, what you've seen in this one is I wanted to create a fin, and this is what I got. Basically, it was predictable. However, those brushes are able to be not fully controlled, but more guided by the direction. Let's take, for example, as I started at the beginning, if I'm going to select a different variation of this brush, so I'm going to select, let's say, variation number four. As I've shown before, is it, it's basically taking a hint or a clue from the direction that I'm moving the mouse, but then it's going to actually create a spins and turns based on the algorithm of the brush. So I can draw this and then you can see as I'm moving it, it's creating new surfaces. I don't control each one of those spins and turns, but basically what Zibash is looking at is the direction where I'm pulling the mouse and it will try to follow that direction. And the nice thing about this is that you do not plan exactly what will come out, but once this is created, it's really easy to start looking at something and saying, hey, I see something interesting in this portion, and then you can embellish it and work on that. Not only that in this case, for example, the twist and turn have been added, in order to even make the explore, exploration uh, more interesting, uh, we decided to add noise to it, basically by assigning an alpha. So I'm going to do an undo. So I'm going to take a different variation of this brush, the next one. Next one is number five, which is very similar to the one I've just shown. However, it has an alpha selected. What the alpha is doing is basically if you're selecting, if you draw something at brush like this, and then you pull, you see that it's doing the pull, but it's also adding some noise to the surface. Again, those noise are indication of direction that you may find with, with the changes of light and shadows, something that will grab your attention, say, oh, I like this one and I want to continue with this. Again, you're basically drawing a curve and then you can pull the curve in different direction. And just just let let the, the, the brush work with you in order to try to show you something that will be interesting. Let's say maybe I'm going to draw a larger brush in the center because maybe I want to pull this thing forward. Okay, so this could be a head of a creature. Let's see, maybe we can we can go even further. Maybe elongate this more in the backside, give it some thickness in here. Um, maybe with a smaller brush size, give it... Um, give it another shape, uh, looking at what's coming out. And basically the process would be is to, to use the curve in order to see if we get something that is interesting. Now you'll notice because it's using noise, the left side and the right side are not identical. In many cases, this is what you want. You do not want to have something that looks symmet fully symmetrical because it's not realistic. However, in this case, uh, I, in order just to retain and bring them back to be symmetry, I can go to the geometry sub palette in the modified topology, there is the mirror and weld button. If I press on it, then the left side will be identical to the right side. So let's see, I, I like where this is getting, maybe something is needed on the bottom portion of that. Let's pull something in here. So yeah, I, I can see a beginning of a creature in here, maybe something, let's see. And, and this is the fun part of that. It's very fast. And basically all I do is I, I pull the stuff, turn this around and find locations where I can add more extrusion or something that will add interest to the shape.
So maybe something like that. I, I like this. So th this is clearly becoming now more clearly that this is going to be the head of the creature. So maybe I'll refine it a bit more, just give it a bit more extensions in here. Let's see what else I want to add. Possibly I can see maybe eyes in here, um, whatever will be representing a mouth in this location, maybe even horn or ears or something like that. So I'm going to select a smaller brush and let's maybe edit in here. Or maybe not too sure, maybe not. Let's see if I want something like that. That would be interesting. I can even pull this one up a bit. So I, I can clearly see a creature in here where you have a face, a, you have appendages, and then you have the main body, and I can continue working on that. On top of this, not only that I get, now those noise things that you see are really important because each one of them facing a different direction allows me to see things that are not fully specified, but only applied by those by those changes. And this is what's the fun part of it. You're basically looking at something until you find what appeals to you and then you embellish it. So in this case, I want to add more surface details. Another brush, which the, the brush that Paul was mentioning, which is the mesh balloon, is another variation for it. It's called a splat, mesh splat, or you'll understand why it's called that way once I use it. It allows me to take and add its surface details quickly. Basically, I'm going to select, let's say, this area. I'm going to draw, and then you see what it's adding. It's adding this noisy surface to it. Um, it's, as you can see in here, it's adding more interest to the, to the surface. In order to make it even clearer, maybe I'll select this to be a different, the base mesh, maybe let's make it something like this, a color, and then I'm going to do fill object. And let's select something, a brighter color for for those details let's see how this is looking like um maybe it's too strong so let's select back back, back this color and maybe something more pink like in here okay that will do and now as as i'm drawing the surface i can continue adding this information in here in fact i'm going to increase the intensity of this brush right now by default it's six i'm going to increase it higher so you can see clearly what it's doing. So I'm going to be drawing something in here. So this is much more uh, prominent features. Let's go to the face. Probably in the face it will be interesting. Um, so this will be the head. Uh, let's suppose, let's see, try to find where the eye is going to be. I'm going to draw in here something. Let's see. And I'm going to look for for where I would want to, as you can see, this the, the, those things are really adding a lot of interest. In this case, I put very strong intensity. I'm, I can lower this. And basically I can draw it in anywhere and, and the size of it will be depending on the brush that I'm selecting. And, and then it will, it's simply being projected into the mesh itself. So once I'm done with this and I'm playing with this thing now, what you see in here is basically because of the projection because when I'm painting in certain direction, I just need to make sure that when when I do not extend beyond the, the parameter or the surface details because ZBrush is seeing the backside and then it will project to it. In some cases, you may want to do it specifically in, in, in with intention. And in some cases, you simply want to avoid those um, lines that, that connecting the surfaces. So I'm going to, in fact, let's let's go back a bit and just I'm going to only do it more carefully now, on the with without not as much intensity, uh, intensity. Let's say about 25, and I'm going to draw, let's say, a part in here. Okay, that's better. So this, and, and then I can go all around in different location and add more of those details. And I find this. Uh, exciting a relaxing fun way to actually experiment with with the brushes uh, using the combination of the new brushes and the ability to quickly try something and see where this takes you i, I find that very exciting and um, so that i am and i'm very excited obviously because we will be having those brushes released next week and i'm eagerly waiting to see what will come out of those brushes the same brushes that paul mentioned 
um, with the way that he was using it for hard surface or something more organic, uh, something more controlled or more unpredictable. That is all very exciting. So, well, thank you for giving me the time to actually present this thing, Paul. Uh, this is my my part of that. Anything that would you like to add to this? Uh, yeah, uh, I, I think this is why I call it the Bob Ross brushes, right? I saw a lot of comments. It's, it's, it's an experiment. Yeah. You're just going and being an artist and then seeing things and letting it come to life, I think. Um, it's, it's a lot of fun just sitting there manipulating, playing around with this. Yes, I agree. Completely agree with that. Yeah, that's fun. So, yeah. so I, I, I got to do it. I got, I got, I, I'm coming back to me. I got to do it. I got to do it gotta do it all right so someone was asking why i didn't get what i was doing with the uh profiles right so again just to recap one of the strong things for me for this feature uh if you take a look say the shoulder pad okay so i've got a version sub tool here where i made using the the new mesh project and then i made a negative of it because this one's already set to be subtractive if i use these profile brushes i can literally say okay let's draw from here to here Right, so right, it cuts into the surface with these profiles, right? So this is what I, the beauty of this that's different than the alpha ones. I can go into oh, I don't know if I like that one. What about this one? Let me grab this tap on the curve, and that's a very different one, right? And I really like using this one to add some accenting along like the path here, right? Using this in here, and then letting go, and then it's automatically in the track like. Right from this, and we start looking at this from a distance. It almost looks like there's a running through that shoulder. I started using since I made a subtractive piece. I'm just adding now other parts to this with this brush. Right, I'm using this because this is snapping to the surface, and then you can hold the shift key and do things like that, and then it's going to turn the curve. So this is the similar, like I said, one of my favorite things to do is use the live boolean. So now you guys can grab something like this. I'm gonna start putting some shapes in this. And because I'm on a sub tool that's a subtractive, when I draw this out, this is automatically gonna subtract and give me it there. Right, so you can see how quick you can up something, right? And then again, I can switch right and i can say to this piece and then this is where like i wanted this piece to have a little more so i'm showing the poly grouping of this and now i want to go back to again those extruder brushes because since the fair asked i really dug these brushes and then again going in my stroke and then framing only the border right so i only want to frame a certain section of of this nemesis, right so i'm using these brushes to frame out and then so when I got a curve and I click, I get that. Like, that's pretty awesome. Like this I see almost as a combination of, I can see a little bit as like panel looping, but really non-destructive panel looping in a way. So I found this and then I'll, I'll bring this all back. Very useful for me. So it's just a way again, how I got to this guy, just again to finalize and give you guys the final the final blah, 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 blahs of what we're doing here, right? And then this is all, again, based upon those brushes. So I just wanted to highlight that because somebody was, there was a bunch of people, wait, I'm not understanding what he was doing. So that's in essence what I was doing. I was using those that other secondary extrude brush to cut into the surface. All right? So that is it. That's it. There's, like, that's a lot, right? I saw people already saying it. This is a lot for a point update. Again, this is going to be 2021.6, right? No, currently we're at 2021.5.1. For all you registered users, free upgrade, okay? This is coming out next week, Tuesday, March 2nd, 2021. Mark your calendars now. Tuesday, March 2nd, 2021 is when you guys will be able to get a hold of this. Now, again, for those of you that are already using ZBrush, you are going to be able to update this, okay, through the Z Upgrader application if you want, if you're existing 2021 versions, 
or if you need to get the full installer, you'll be able to go download the full installer on your licenses page. If you're currently not using 2021, you need to have 21, 21 on your computer in order to update using the upgrader, okay? So keep that in mind. And for those of you that are our subscriber users, taking advantage of the month to month or the six month subscription, of course, when this version gets released, you guys will then be getting access to the newest version, which is the 2021.6. So there's a lot there, obviously. Um, in there, we've got a, a fun stream with you guys. You guys got to get Mr. Uh, Mr. ZBrush himself pixelator this time in the stream. So it wasn't just me doing my crazy loudness. We've got a lot of great features. There's a lot of controlling features in here. There's a lot of features for you guys just to be an artist and discover. Those Bob Rosses and brushes, I like to call them, okay? So I really can't thank you guys all enough for being in here and being with us for this stream. I'm looking forward to see what you're doing. I know the rest of the company, everyone involved in making ZBrush is really looking forward to getting this in your hands and seeing what you guys do with it because that's always one of the most exciting parts for us. All right, so on behalf of uh, myself, Paul Gabry, and on behalf of Mr. ZBrush himself, Pixelator, it's been a pleasure showing you guys what's coming down the line for ZBrush 2021.6. Thank you for watching. I'm blind. I'm out.